uh, taken apart the, the caulking gun to put in the caulking that I want. This uh, was all tangled around here, and I thought, yeah, you should know me by now. I try not to throw out anything. So I thought, hmm, why can't this be used to fill some of the holes in my bread box? Uh -huh. So that's what we're going to do. I also saved some of these little plastic pieces from before. So we're going to use that to plug up this hole. And I'm going to go around back and do the same thing from the back end. This is where that uh, door control was setting. Remember we pulled it out and clipped the wires off? Make sure that's all nice and I don't want to do it too much though because the fiberglass that's inside of here needs a little loft puffiness to keep its uh, values, our values, so we're just going to cover up the hole a little bit here with this extra caulking. That way I haven't even, I've covered up all the holes in here and I haven't used a bit of my new caulking yet. Yay! One of the easiest ways I've found so far to keep caulking fresh is to uh, put a screw inside of the end of the caulking tube and then when you need to you just take a screwdriver and unscrew that. And this is the one that I use for my rain harvesting tank. So, and that has kept it fresh for a long time. But uh, of course, it doesn't stay fresh indefinitely. Now, the thing about these is that you don't want to, when you open the fresh one. This is our fire block one that we bought at the, I bought at the hardware store. You don't want to cut off too much of the tip because then the screw that you're using to plug it up. I just have this little carpenter screw I'm going to use it'll be too big. So you just want to cut off the bare tip of it. And I gotta go get a knife. That's ready to go when we need it. Um, went to the hardware store and asked him about this. Uh, it's just a spray glue that I had hanging around for my arts and crafts. If that would hold up to gluing the reflective uh, sheeting onto the bread box. And I called actually the distributors at uh, Elmer's Products and asked him about that. And he says he said he doesn't think it would hold on after it warmed up, it would just start peeling off. Okay, so, do we need this? No. Nope. So then I called up the hardware store and I says, well, do you have adhesive glues? This is after I looked through the website. And no adhesive glues that would hold up to heat as far as spray goes. So I called the hardware store. I says, what would you use on this situation? I explained to him, he says, well, gee, how about a fire resistance silicone sealant? Well, ta-da, like, we just bought that. Cool, okay, so this is gonna be my glue to adhere the, the sheeting well, onto the I was asking myself, how do you measure to make sure that you got the right measurements? You don't have to keep recutting and piecing things together. I could go in with a measuring tape and do it. Um, I could estimate it, but I thought, you know, the exterior of your box isn't all that much different than the interior. You just have to take out the diameters of your insulation and your walls. There you go. And I want a little bit of uh, overlap, just, just a tad. So I'll just use the back of the box. I'll run the sheet up the back of the box. Wow, 
This is really easy to cut. I just uh, loose fitted it in there to see what it looks like. And uh, if you remember the curve on the inside where the, the hot end of the water tank's going to fit, I measured for that. It was another 33 inches. But even so, I have over what I should have on the bottom. That's okay, I can just cut that off. Um, but I think that's going to work. I wanted to do it as a loose fit standing up so I could get a measurement on the back before I put it in. And um, now that I know it's going to fit pretty well, I'm going to lay it down in its, like its final position to glue it in so I don't have it, gravity working against me. in and stuff it and I want to put a little bit of duct tape on it just to hold it in. <laughs> bottom of my tank or the hot end, what will be the hot end, as compared to where I need to plumb it into the water box. And whatever inches I can save on uh, my copper piping uh, for uh, water flow, I want to do it. So I want to have it just at the edge of where this door is, but not interfering with getting the door in and out. And also, because if I do put a top flange on it to reflect the sunlight down into the box, I don't want it to be interfering with this door if I should happen to have to get it open. So it's just going to be on the edge of the, of the uh, hot water uh, closet. That's within a half an inch. That's pretty good clearance. I want to measure from, from edge to edge to make sure that I'm as close to the paneling as I can, but not actually touching it. Mobile homes need flex in the wind. I don't want it to be scratched up against the mobile home when it moves a little bit in the high winds we get around here. <laughs> 